praise you all by you are good your grace and your mercy endures forever and that is your faithfulness abba our father your presence is wanted here your presence is needed here your ruha hakodesh is needed let me not let me not let us not do anything say anything even the smallest thing without your ruha without your holy presence without your holy spirit without your holy unctions and promptings and guidings let none of your body move without the ruhak within moving them and as we read this word from your prophet as we read your word through your prophet out of this man's mouth father let your ruhak be present let your ruhak hakodosh be present let your ruhak hakodosh be present Hallelujah, hallelujah. Ruhak, speak through your word. Test the hearts of whom you choose. Selah, Selah, the name of Yeshua. Selah, Selah. Michael, chapter four, verse one. But in the Arat Yahameen, it will come about that the mountain of Yah's house will be established as the most important mountain. It's happening now. It will be regarded more highly than the other hills. And peoples will stream there. Many Gentiles will go astray. Sorry, many Gentiles will go and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of Yah, to the house of Jacob. He will teach us about his ways. Many Gentiles, listen. Many Gentiles will say, come, let us go up to the mountain of Yah, which is, who's there? The house of Elohim. And who's there? Jacob. And Jacob will teach us about his way. Many people in the right uh-huh, mm -hmm, will come up to the mountain of Yah, to the house of Yah, to the house of Elohim, to Jacob, to us. All right. And they will come, the Gentiles will come, and they will say, teach us about the ways of Yah. He will teach us about his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion will go forth Torah, teachings, instructions, the word of Yah from, Yer from Jerusalem. He will judge between many peoples and arbitrate for many nations far away. Then they will hammer their swords into plow blades and their spears into pruning knives. Nations will not raise words at each other, and they will no longer learn war. So it will go from having weapons of war to weapons of reaping in the Irat Yahameen. It will go from weapons of war to tools of reaping because right now the harvest is plentiful, but the labors are few. Hallelujah. Instead, each person will sit under his vine. Whose vine? Jacob's vine. Each person will sit under his vine and fig tree with no one to upset him. For the mouth of Yah has spoken, for all the people will walk each in the name of its God. But we will walk in the name of Yah, our Elohim, forever and ever. When that day comes, says Yah, I will assemble the lame and gather those who were dispersed, along with those I afflicted. I will make the lame a remnant and those who were driven off a strong nation. Those who have ears hear, Yah will rule them on Mount Zion from that time forth and forever. You, tower of the flock, hallelujah. You, tower of the flock, heal of the daughter of Zion. To you, your former sovereignty will return. Hey, y'all, your former sovereignty is returning. Your former kingship is returning. Your former uh, uh, placement as a son of the king of kings is returning. It's returning, hallelujah. Your former sovereignty will return. The royal power of the daughter of Jerusalem. Why are you crying out? Don't you have a king? Has your counselor been destroyed? That you are seized with pain like a woman in labor? Well, be in pain. Work to give birth. If there's pain going on, be there. Work through there. Hallelujah. Be in pain. Work to give birth like a woman in labor, daughter of Zion. For now you go out. You will go out of the city and live in the wilds till you reach Babylon. There you will be rescued. Think about this. Listen to this prophecy. 
from the prophet Micah. You will go to have to go to Babylon. But there in Babylon, you will be rescued. There Yah will redeem you from the power of your enemies. It's happening now. It's happening now. Jacob is being redeemed from the power of his enemies. In Babylon he is. Now many nations have gathered against you. And they say, let her be defiled. Let's gloat over Zion. But here he goes. But they don't know the thoughts of Yah. They don't understand his plan. For he has gathered them like sheaves on the threshing floor. Get up, start threshing, daughter of Zion, for I will make your horns like iron. A woman, I will make your horns like iron and your hoofs like bronze. You will crush many peoples and devote their plunder to Yah, their wealth to the Lord of all the earth. Now gather yourself in troops, you who are accustomed in being, to being in troops. They have laid seas on us. They're striking us. They're striking the judge of Israel on the cheek with a stick. But chapter 5, verse 1. But you, Bethlehem, near Ephrat, Ephrat, so small among the clans of Judah. So small amongst the clans. So small amongst the clans of Judah. Out of you, out of you will come forth to me the future ruler of Israel. Hallelujah. Whose origins are far in the past, back in ancient times. This is what's happening now. We are rebuilding the ancient. What's happening now? The men who are understanding who they are are rebuilding the ancient. The women who are understanding the true modesty and understanding how to be a true daughter of Yah, a daughter of Yah, and they're bringing back the ancient with their head covered, with the way that they talk, with the way that they walk in meekness and humility inside of their strength, strong as iron they are, the women. Therefore, he will give up Israel only until she, hallelujah, Therefore, he will give up Israel only until she who is in labor gives birth. Then the rest of his king's men will return to the people of Israel. He will stand and feed his flock in the strength of Yah, in the majesty of his name, of Yahweh, his Elohim. And they will say, and they will stay put as he grows, and they will stay put as he grows great to the very ends of the earth. And this will be peace. If Asher invades our land, if he overruns our fortresses, we will raise seven shepherds against him, eight leaders of men. They will shepherd the land of Asher with the sword and the land of Nimrod at his gates. And he will rescue us from Asher when he invades our land, when he overruns our borders. Then the remnant of Jacob, surrounded by many people, will be like dew from Yah, like showers on the grass, which doesn't wait for a man lesson or expect anything from mortals the remnant of jacob among the nations surrounded by many peoples will be like a lion among forest animals like a lion among flocks of sheep if it passes through tramples and tears and tears into pieces there is no one to rescue them your hand will be raised over your enemies all your adversaries will be destroyed when that day comes says yah i will cut off your horses from among you and destroy your chariots i will cut off the cities of your land and lay waste your strongholds i will cut off sorceries from your land you will no longer have soothsayers i will cut off carved images hallelujah and standing stones from among you no longer will you worship what your own hands have made no longer are we to worship what our own hands have made hallelujah I will pull up sacred poles from among you and destroy your enemies. I will wreak vengeance and anger and fury on nations because they would not listen. So listen. 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 When you hear his voice, harder not so hard. When you hear the Ruchach, harder not so hard. Chapter 6, Micah. So listen not, right? So listen now to what Yah says. Stand up and state your case to the mountains. Let the hills hear what you have to say. Listen, mountains, to Yahweh's case. Also, you are doing rocks that support the earth. Yah has a case against his people. He wants to argue it out with Israel. Listen, he wants to argue it out with Israel. And this is what Yah is saying. My people, what have I done to you? How have I worried you? Answer me. I brought you up from the land of Egypt. I redeemed you from the life of slavery. I sent Moshe, Aaron, and Miriam to lead you, my people. Just remember what Balak, the king of Moab, had planned. The Moabite had planned. What Balaam, <coughs> excuse me, Balaam, the son of Baruch, answered him. And what happened between Shittim and Gilgal? 
so that you will understand the saving deeds of Yah. Remember how what he's done for you. Remember what he's done for you. Remember what he's done for Hallelujah. Shalom. Remember what he's done for you. Remember his saving deeds. You see why the first command says what? I am Yahweh Elohim and I have brought you out. I'm Yahweh Elohim. I'm the Lord your God. I'm Yahweh Elohim. I have brought you out of bondage. I have brought you out of bondage. The abode of slavery. You was living there in slavery and he saved you. So that you will understand the saving deeds of Yah. With what can I come before Yah to bow down before him on high? Should I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves in their first year? Will Yah take delight in thousands of rams? Now this is the question that Israel is asking. Will Adonai, will Yah take delight in thousands of rams? With ten thousands of rivers of or olive oil, would Yah take delight in ten thousand rivers of olive oil? Could I give my firstborn to pay for my crimes, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? Human being, this is Yah responding to Israel. He trying to Israel trying to figure out what can I give, what can I sacrifice, what will Yah accept? If I had a river, if I had ten thousand rivers of olive oil, if I had 10,000 rivers of olive oil, thousands of rams, could I give my firstborn to pay for my crimes, the fruit of my body for the sins of my soul? And this is Yah's answer, human being. You have already been told what is good. We have already been told what is good. Human being, you have already been told what is good. What Yah demands of you, no more than to act justly, love grace, and walk in purity with your Elohim. Love justice, love grace, and walk in purity. Hallelujah. The voice of Yah, he called to the city and its wisdom, and it, mm, the voice of Yah, he called to the city, and it is wisdom to fear your name. Listen to the rod message iron listen to the rod and to him who commissioned it mm. are there still Ill, are there still ill-gotten gains in the house of the wicked still the detestable short e5 measure should i declare innocent wicked scales and a bag of frauds and weights the rich men they are full of violence the inhabitants tell lies with tongues of deceit in their mouth therefore i am starting to strike you down to destroy you because of your sins. You will eat but not be satisfied with hunger gnawing inside you. You will con mm. you will conceive but not give birth. You will conceive but not give birth. That is horrible, right? I know women that literally don't go through that. They lose the child. Conceive and not give birth. And that is a very painful thing to go through that in the spirit, in the walk and the calling for, for, for Yah to, 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 to plant a seed in you. And you know that there's work that you got to do, you know, but because of the sin, the work that you got to do is never brought forth into manifest. It's just in you. It's conceived, but it hasn't been brought forth to birth. It hasn't been brought forth to life. That's a very, very painful thing to experience. I know about that. You will conceive, but not give birth. If you do give birth, I will give him to the sword. You will sow, but not reap. You will press olives, but not rub yourself with oil. Likewise, you will press grapes, but not drink the wine. For you keep the regulations of Omari and the practices of the house of Acab, modeling yourselves on their advice. Why? Because you keep on going after the other kingdoms and the other nations, right? And you're modeling yourself after this world. Stop modeling yourself after this world. Men, stop modeling yourself after this world. Especially women, please stop modeling yourself after this world. Hallelujah. Therefore, I will make you an object of horror. 
the inhabitants of the city of this city a cause for contempt. You will suffer the insults aimed at my people. Woe to me, for I have become the leavings of a summer fruit. Like the gleanings, when the vengeance is finished, there isn't any cluster worth eating. No early ripened fig that, that appeals to me. No early ripened fig that appeals to me. Chapter 7, Micah. The godly have been destroyed from the land. There is no upright among humankind. They all lie and wait for blood. Each hunts his brother with a net. Their hands do evil well. The prince makes his request. The judge grants it for a price. And the great man expresses his evil desires. Thus, they weave it together. The best of them is a briar. The most upright, worse than a thorn hedge. The time of your watchmen, of your punishment, has come. The time of the watchman and your punishment has come, enemies of Yah. The time of your watchman of your punishment has come. Now they will be confused. Don't trust in your neighbor. Don't put confidence in a close friend. Shut the gates of your mouth, even from your wife. Lying there in the bed with you. For a son insults his father. A daughter rises against her mother. A daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a person's enemies are the members of his own household. Whew. Of course, we started reading in the Iraq Yahamim. These days are coming. These days are here. And this is what Yeshua said himself. Yet in the last days, what's going to happen? For a son will insult his father. A daughter rises against her mother. A daughter-in-law against her a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law and a person's enemies will be the members of his own household. But I love this part, Micah 7 and 7. But as for me, I will look to Yah. I will wait for the Elohim of my salvation. My God will hear me. Enemies of mine don't go over me. Although I have fallen, I will rise. Though I live in the dark, Yah is my life. I will endure Yahweh's rage because I did sin against him. Until he pleads my cause and judges in my favor, then he will bring me out into the light. Hallelujah. Then he will bring me out into the light. And I will see his justice. My enemies will see too. And shame will cover those who said to me. And shame will cover those who said to me, Where is your God? I will gloat over them. As they are trampled underfoot like mud in the streets. Don't worry about your enemies is talking crazy, man. They're like, oh, you a follower of God? No, or, or if God was real, then you wouldn't have to live like that. If God was this, then you wouldn't have to be like this. If God loved you, you wouldn't be struggling like this. And if you really was a child of God, you wouldn't have this problem. All of that garbage we done heard throughout the years, man. Then he will bring me into the light. And I will see his justice. My enemies will see too and shame and cover those who said to me, where is your Elohim? I will gloat over them as they are trampled underfoot like mud in the streets. That will be the day for rebuilding your walls, a day for expanding your territory, a day when your people will come back to you. From Asher, from the cities of Egypt, from the Egypt, from the far as the Euphrates River, from sea to sea, from mountain to mountain, the earth will be desolate for those living in it as a result of their deeds. Therefore, shepherd your people with your staff the flock that belongs to you, whoever you have under your care, please shepherd them. And of course, shepherding with the staff, the staff is Lamed, the staff is the teacher. So shepherd your people. What does it say here? Shepherd your people with your staff. Shepherd your people with your staff, the flock that belongs to you, who live alone like a forest in the middle of fertile pasture. Let them feed in Bashan and Gilad as they did in the days of old, as in the days when you came out of Egypt. I will show them wonders. Shepherd the people that Yah has put in your care. And do it correctly. He will show them wonders. Hallelujah. I will show them wonders. The nations will see that and be put to shame. In spite of all their power, they will cover their mouth with their hands, right? And their ears will be deafened. They will lick the dust like snakes. They will emerge from their fortresses trembling like reptiles. They crawl about the earth. They will come with fear to Yahweh Elohim, our God, afraid. Because of you. Do what you're supposed to. Do this thing correctly. And all your enemies, all the all, not your enemies, the enemies of Yah, right? The enemies of Yah, the children of the devil, will do what? Crawl about the earth and they will come with fear to our God, afraid because of you. Who is an Elohim like you? Who is a God like you? Yahweh pardoning the sins and overlooking the crimes of the remnant. 
of his heritage. He does not retain his anger forever. Therefore, repent. He does not retain his anger forever because he delights in grace. Hold on. Our Father delights in grace. Like, displayed his grace, delights him. We're human. We all know about pleasure and being delighted in something, right? Think about it. Elohim is delighted in grace. That literally brings him pleasure to give out grace. It brings, it brings him pleasure to give out grace. Hallelujah. He does not retain his anger forever, but he delights in grace. He will again have compassion on us. He will subdue our enemies. You will throw their sins in the depths of the sea. Hallelujah. In the depths of the sea. You will show truth to Jacob and grace to Abraham as you have sworn to our ancestors since long ago, the covenant. That is my God. Fathers, thank you for your word. Thank you for the beginning of this new week. Father, let your Ruhak speak. Let your Ruhak be present, at which is you, because you are spirit, and we must worship you in spirit and truth. So let your truthful spirit, the spirit of truth, Ruhak HaKodesh, be present with me, Father. 